Coming up on Cardinals Insider, Tommy Edmond talks about his favorite memories as a Cardinal. Yeah, it's one of those things where you black out a little bit. You, uh, you're rounding second, and you're like, oh, yeah, seriously, how did I get here? <laughs> Plus, a special moment for some kids at Bush Stadium. I'm, I'm just so happy to see you, oh, man. Oh, thank you, man. Give me a hug. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate you. <laughs> and later... This was everything I dreamed it would possibly be. I never imagined that this would happen. We spend some time with Cards broadcaster Chip Carey. Those stories and more ahead on a brand new Cards Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider. I'm Ozzie Smith. Tommy Edmond has been a steady presence ever since his big league debut in 2019. He's reliable and versatile. We talked to Tommy about his memories for this week's Picture this. Edmund with a drive out to deep right. It is good! It's a walk off. The Cardinals were down to their final out, and they win it. That's the, uh, the walk off homer against Cincinnati. I think that was my first walk off homer in the big leagues. And uh, I believe we were down at the time. I think we were down one. Uh, two outs and I think I scooped a slider out to the bullpen and that's a great picture right there. You can see how excited we all are. And I wasn't expecting a homer off the bat and, and it took a second for me to process, like wait a second, game's over now. That was a walk off home run. And then seeing all the all my teammates surrounding home plate uh, waiting for me to, to touch home is, is a great feeling. Yeah, it's one of those things where you black out a little bit. You, uh, you're rounding second and you're like, oh yeah, so wait a second, how did I get here? <laughs> but it was a uh, Definitely a, a very exciting moment and nothing quite like it. Congratulations, Paul, Tommy, Nolan, Tyler, and Harrison, as well as the entire Cardinals on your golden achievements and for being recognized as the finest in the field. Yeah, that was, that was an amazing experience as well. And not only uh, getting to receive it, but getting to share it with uh, four other of my teammates. Just the culmination of a lot of hard work over, over my life and uh, definitely had a lot of people I was very thankful for, all, all my coaches along the way who had hit me ground balls and, and worked with me on footwork and, and everything like that. It was a very special moment. Fortunately, we had a, had a lot of family who was out there to, to see it as well. I think once I found a place for it uh, in our house and I set it up on the on the TV console on the mantle, uh, I would look at it every now and then and, and just think, wow, like I actually won that award. Like, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Each year, Cardinal players and broadcasters welcome area kids to Bush as part of the player ticket program. It's a chance to see the game and also meet the person who purchased their seats. What's up? How y'all doing? How's everybody doing? How are you? How are you? How do I say your name? Salome? Salome. Salome. Nice to meet you, Chase. How are you? What's your name? Shay. Shay. Allie. Claire. Claire. Nice to meet you, Claire. You know what? I always wanted to be a baseball player. But you know what I'm about to do? I'm about to have an album come out, country music. How did you feel winning the World Series in 2011? I felt great about it. And 06. We won 06 also. Yes, sir. What, what is your favorite team to play against? Favorite team to play against? The Cubs. Because I love beating the Cubs. I've been pitching for 18 years in the big leagues. But I've, I've been in I've been in professional baseball for over 23 years. Dang. Who bad. who here is less than 23 years old? Oh yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, y'all are all less y'all are all less than 23 years old. I mean, I, I'm I'm just so happy to see you, oh, man. Oh, thank you, man. Give me a hug. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate you. I have a question. How how do you become such a great pitcher? A lot of practice, practice and repetition, right? And, and I've been given some ability. I, I'm tall, I'm a big guy, right? Um, but some of it is talent that you can't teach and some of it's stuff that you have to learn, you know? All right, what do you think? Just right here in the front like this? I go around. I'll go behind you. I'll go right behind you. Go Cardinals! Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. You can leave St. Louis but St. Louis never leaves you. We get to know New Cards TV broadcaster Chip Carey. Stay with us.
Broadcasting baseball is Chip Carey's family business. His grandfather, Harry, and father, Skip, spent their careers in Major League Baseball booths. And after a long run in Atlanta, Chip joined the Cardinals telecast just before spring training. It's a bit of a homecoming for a kid who grew up in West St. Louis County. Breaking ball, hammer down the line, a J-bomb! Jordan Walker's first big league homer. Swing and a high fly ball deep right. And the wall, it's long gone for Gorman. Ground ball, Cardinals win it on the first pitch. This was everything I dreamed it would possibly be. I never imagined that this would happen. And I'm so humbled that I've been accepted and welcomed by so many so warmly. Uh, when you're the new guy in class and you're speaking a different language, it's an awkward transition, but everybody's gone out of their way to make me feel like I'm truly part of the family. And that starts with the DeWitts on down and uh, even the clubhouse guys on up. They've made me feel like I've been here a long, long time. And for the new guy trying to find my way and make my way with this organization representing so many great people, that's really been exciting, rewarding, and as I said, humbling. I grew up listening to Jack Buck and Mike Shannon and Jay Randolph and I won't say Dizzy Dean, I wasn't quite that old, but Harry Carey and Joe Garagiola and Francis Lau and all those folks, Danny Mack, Joe Buck, those are all people who built the history of Cardinals baseball in radio and television and all of us, I think, are placeholders for uh, the next person that follows us and we all want to try to honor that legacy by being prepared and professional and have fun and represent the team in this town and this community, Cardinal Nation to the best of our ability. I think all of us who love the Cardinals and grew up listening to them want to make them as proud as we possibly can. When I walked into that booth, I couldn't help but think, my gosh, in 1945, Harry Carey sat in a booth in Sportsman's Park and started his Cardinals career. And now here we are, you know, 80 years later almost, his grandson, who grew up in West County, is following in those footsteps and trying to complete a circle, as it were. And there are so many things about Harry that I didn't know, but as I've come to live here in the baseball season and finding out where he lived and seeing his haunts and reading his drinking diary, all those fun things that he got to do, I'm sort of reliving his life, as I said, almost a century later. And um, that's, that's really been a rewarding thing personally as well as professionally. And as I said, I know he's sitting right outside the booth smiling and I walk out of there every day thinking, hope I made you proud today. You can leave St. Louis, but St. Louis never leaves you. It always felt like when I'd see the Gateway Arch and I'd see Lambert Field and I'd see the Pasta House Company and Toasted Ravioli, I always felt like, wow, this is part of who we are. And certainly Cardinals baseball is a gigantic part of that. I, I came from an era where I learned the 1964 Cardinals lineup before I knew the ABCs. And I think that's something that's always resonated here. And when you look out and you see this sea of red in this ballpark and three, four generations of family members coming to watch this team play day after day and night after night. Man, if you can't get fired up and appreciate the history, not just of our town, but of this ballpark by being here, you're really missing out. Coming up, Big Mac Land has seen some big time performances. Oh, he knocked out the eye in Big Mac Land. We're talking MVP seasons after the break. We're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Big Mac Land all summer. Today, let's look back at the all-time MVP seasons that have unfolded beneath the Golden Arches. Runner going! There it goes! It's in Big Mac Land! Oh! He knocked out the eye in Big Mac Land! He hit the eye and it crushed! And the ball's up in Big Mac Land! It hit Redford's painting of the mountain! Get up, baby! Get up! Oh, yeah! I think he hit the M on Big Mac. Albert hits it out to deep left. Number 701 into Big Mac land. Big Mac land has seen its fair share of great performances. Runner goes on 3-2, and there it goes. See you later. But only two men have put together enough moments to win an MVP. In 2005, its final season in Busch Stadium 2, Big Mac Land saw its first Cardinals MVP season. Albert Pujols had been a top five finisher in the MVP voting before, but in 2005, he won the first of three MVPs. 
Albert brought two more MVP seasons to St. Louis in 2008 and 2009, this time under a new Big Mac land at Busch Stadium 3. In those three seasons, Albert averaged 41 home runs, 122 RBIs, and hit a combined 341 average. Of course, he has one other signature moment with Big Mac land, parking number 701 in the section during the closing days of his storied career. The one-two. Albert hits it out to deep left. Number 701 in the Big Mac land. Albert didn't win the MVP that year, but his teammate did. Launched into deep left field off the bat of Goldschmidt and gone in the Big Mac land. Big Mac land saw Paul Goldschmidt take the mantle of MVP last year, and fittingly, Albert was there to pass the torch. Goldie blasted 35 homers to go along with 115 RBIs, and he did it all while playing outstanding defense. Big Mac land has seen a lot, but Albert and Goldie rise above the rest when it comes to putting up seasons with unmatched numbers. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Travis Hawkins. Cardinal history has unfolded in big moments and subtle shifts. Here's an example of a day that changed the franchise. The date was August 11th, 1940, and in the moment, it felt disastrous for a young pitcher at Class D Daytona Beach. His name was Stan Musial, and with a small roster, he had to play the field when he wasn't pitching. He dove in center on August 11th, mashing his shoulder into the ground. Signs of injury were convincing and immediate. It was clear he was done as a pitcher. So the Cardinals made Musial a full-time outfielder, and it didn't take long to show his injury was actually a blessing in disguise. He hit 359 the next season, split between Class C Springfield and Double A Rochester. Then on September 17th, at 20 years old, he got the call to St. Louis and never went back down. What followed was 22 seasons of steady and relentless production, a career slash line of 331, 417, and 559. Three-time MVP, 24-time All-Star, seven batting titles, and a member of three world championship rosters. And there it goes. 475 homers, 725 doubles, 3,630 hits divided evenly right down the middle, home and road, 1,815 each. Stan, I wonder if you remember your first hit. Is this a bigger kick than the first one? Well, it's uh, hard to say. That first one was uh, a big thrill, too, because that was the uh, first time at the plate, and the second time, rather, and uh, just being in the big leagues is really a thrill in itself. He is unarguably one of the greatest players in baseball history. Maybe even more important, he might be one of the best humans to ever lace up a pair of spikes. Kind, caring, thoughtful, and loyal. Like the plaque says, baseball's perfect warrior, baseball's perfect night. August 11th, 1940, the date that changed Stan Musial's position, changed his career, and certainly changed Cardinals history. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. Still to come. Ya estamos en el SAP o la opción de español en Valley Sports Midwest. The Cardinales are on TV. See how Benji and Polo can be heard on Valley Sports Midwest. Cardinal games are now available in Spanish on TV. Valley Sports Midwest is laying the Spanish radio broadcast over the television feed using the SAP function. Es una noticia espectacular recientemente que por fin ya estamos en el SAP o la opción de español en Valley Sports Midwest. I think it's very important for people to know that um, that not only the Hispanic community here in St. Louis will have a chance to uh, to uh, actually listen to us and now with the SAP button with Valley Sport, they can hear us. Uh, it's very important also because the players, uh, Latin players, coaches, their family might be the ones that don't speak English, including my mom and Polo's mom probably, that they don't speak English. So they, they can see that option down at the bottom. You hit the SAP button on Valley Sport and you have us. It's very important. 
Pues ahí está, esa es la otra opción que tenemos. No solamente por la tremenda 880 o la aplicación de MLB at bat, pero ahora por Valley Sports Midwest también usted puede vivir, puede escuchar, puede sentir las emociones del béisbol. Entonces, nos escuchamos por la tremenda y nos vemos por Valley Sports Midwest. Ahí lo esperamos, cardenales. Playball is a Major League Baseball initiative that encourages kids to be active and engaged in baseball or softball. And every season, the Cardinals open the gates to Bush and offer local kids with some top-notch baseball coaching. Here's what this year's clinic looked like. Cardinals Play Ball, presented by Nike, is our youth baseball softball initiative to get kids out playing baseball and softball. And today they get two free baseball tickets for tonight's game, a bat and ball set, and a Nike Cardinals t-shirt. So kids ages three to seven get to run the bases here today. Kids ages eight to 13 will take part in our clinics. And we've got different stations where they'll do hitting, infield, outfield, agility, and a 60 yard dash. And then everybody gets to participate out in Ford Plaza with baseball and softball themed related activities. My name is Scott Terry. I played here from 87 to 92. And uh, after I retired, I came back and got involved with the Cardinals as an alumni. Anything having to do with amateur baseball, I'm a part of. Kids are excited when they get to get out on a field where major league ball players are playing. We want to get them active. We want to throw them ground balls. We want to throw them fly balls. We're going to do a little base stealing, some secondary leads, swing the bat. So all baseball activities and our alumni are just kind of leading each group through that process. So we do play ball because it's fun for the kids. They learn baseball and softball at the most basic level and they stay active. And the best part of all, it's free. Let's go Cardinals! When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Owen in Chesterfield, Missouri asks, what was your favorite haircut from your playing days? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna say that it was the days of the afro. You know, it took me a lot of time to, to get that thing to looking just right and, and, and staying shapely while trying to wear a baseball cap. Especially when I went out to, to do my flip, you know, trying to keep the hat on the head while, uh, while having all that hair, which I was able to accomplish a few times. I ran out of people who would be able to help me keep it together, so um, I had to shave it and playing here in St. Louis, it was rather hot too, you know, so um, it, for cooler purposes. So I would say that the Afro, it, it, was, it was work. Thanks for the question, Owen. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, don't go anywhere. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. You know, getting a song stuck in your head can make it a really good day or a really bad day. Which one depends on the song? We asked the guys what song they've had stuck in their head recently. Last song stuck in my head? Yeah. Oof. Oh, so many TikTok trends. What's this new song by Selena Gomez? It's like Calm Down or something, I think it's called. Calm down, calm down. Probably Goodbye Angels by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Probably that Lizzo song. I can hear the beat now. It started, I'm just gonna be stuck in my head Is all day just now. Is dance to it? Oh yeah. Live Wire by Molly Crew. I just watched that Dirt movie and that beginning song when they like try to figure out their band sound. So a lot of like rock music gets stuck in my head. Probably uh, Umbrella by Rihanna after the halftime performance. Usually around our house, my wife plays all the music. So it would have to be something that she plays. Usually she plays a lot of country music. I would say You Proof by Morgan Wallen. It's probably Circo Loco by Drake, yeah. I don't know what the name of it is, but part of it says Midnight at Austin, or in Austin, but uh, do you know the name? Yeah, 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 I know this. I lost it, yeah. Midnight <laughs> in Austin. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure why. Probably something Luke Bryan. I'm on a little Luke Bryan kick. Oh, probably like a kid's song. It's the beginning of like the story bots, probably. We're big into that right now, so that one gets stuck in your head pretty good. Ooh, last song that I got stuck in my head? Love and Reggae by, uh, I don't know who it's by, but it's called Love and Reggae. Probably Baby Shark from, uh, you know, all those minor league games. They always like to play Baby Shark, and that one just gets stuck in your head. It's, it's 
Like the worst dance. song ever made. Dance too. That was stuck in my head just thinking about it. Thanks a lot. I am always singing songs. The last one probably freestyled by Lil Baby. So Mason, Tink, and I listen to him all the time, and every time we're in the car together, we're blasting Lil Baby, so that's probably the song that's been stuck in my head. I was actually singing one the other day, and I really don't like it. Um, ooh, I couldn't tell you the name, though. I don't know what it's called. It was some Justin Bieber song, and I just thought that I don't like Justin Bieber or anything. You know, he's a Canadian kid, and you know, just not the right melody for me. I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. I'm not familiar with it. How does that go again? <laughs> Tell me why ain't nothing but a heartbreak. Tell me why. Something like that. <laughs> That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com slash insider or watch full episodes on YouTube. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you right back here next week.